Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, however you're watching, we are privileged to be with you and we're glad to have you worship with us this week. A few announcements before worship begins. A reminder that today at 1030, uh, Stephanie Young, our choir director, and Jeff Ward, who's part of our praise band, will be leading us again in another Zoom hymn sing-along. And just a friendly reminder, uh, please join. Your line will be muted, so whether you're a great singer or not so great like myself, uh, nobody will hear you besides Stephanie or Jeff. That's who you hear. So it's a great opportunity to come together and make a joyful noise to the Lord. Another announcement is thank you to all who helped plan, helped serve, and who came to our Blue service a couple Sundays ago. It was an amazing service. Uh, and it was really a, a touching service for myself to be a part of and to lead. And so thank you for all who participated and all who helped out with that. Because this service went uh, just really well, we're having an, our second outdoor in-person worship service at 5 p.m. Uh, tonight, Sunday. Um, and if you haven't heard, Jeff, Stephanie and Susan will be leading us in music. We'll have parking in the lower lot and we'll worship in the upper lot. Um, it'll be a blend of our two services, so our traditional and our contemporary. So it'll have elements of each service and we would invite you to come. It'll last between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. And um, hopefully you've already registered, but if you haven't, Please feel free to come tonight, but make sure you come early so you can get checked in and get all signed in for our worship service. And our last announcement is we hope to have another outdoor in-person worship service on Sunday, October 25th at 5 p.m. It will be Reformation Sunday, and it's also a Sunday where we are going to celebrate our confirmands as well. The service will be, like I said, at 5 p.m. in the upper parking lot, and we'll be doing uh, confirmation care bags again this year. So please check your bulletin for details on that. This is an opportunity to drop off cards or small gifts or well wishes for our confirmands. And so we just appreciate all the support that you show um, our congregation and our confirmands. And with that, we begin worship with our first hymn. Yeah. 
I come to you for I know you satisfy. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So I wait for you. So I. Please join me in confession that can be found in your bulletin. Lord God, we admit that we have done wrong to you and to one another. We have sinned by our thoughts, by our words, and by our actions. These sins are a darkness that surrounds us, and we confess before you now. So we'll take a moment of silence for reflection. Lord, we want to turn away from this old life. Have mercy on us and shine your light upon us. Amen. Please receive Christ's forgiveness. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin, the palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all the peoples a feast of rich food. 
a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all the peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our Psalm today is Psalm 23. Please read along. The words can be found in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The second lesson this morning is Philippians chapter four, verses one through nine. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Sintanchi to be the same mind in the Lord, Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Our gospel today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged, so he sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, burned their city, and then he said to the slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. and girls. Oh. It's 
good to see you. I just had a really good rest. Oh, I feel so much better after having that good wretch, wretch, wretch. Oh, oh, I had a good sleep and a good rest. Do you ever have that where you maybe take a nap during the day or if you have a really good night's sleep, you wake up feeling really refreshed in the morning? Yeah, me too. And today we hear a psalm, a story, uh, it's kind of a poem that talks about God being our shepherd. And what our shepherd does is he takes us beside still waters and he lays us down in green pastures and he provides rest for us. You see, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have trouble falling asleep and maybe my mind's thinking about a bunch of stuff and I can't let things go. And so there's a couple of different things that you can do. One is count sheep, <laughs> get it. But the other thing you can do, I think that always helps me sleep a little bit better, is I remember that I have a shepherd who's looking out for me. A shepherd, just like the shepherd who watches over the sheep, I have God who watches over me. So as I'm laying down to sleep at night, I remember that all those worries in my head, all those things that I might feel anxious about or nervous about, I can let them go. Because even when I'm sleeping, even when I'm fast asleep, God is there watching out for me. And God is providing a space for me to rest so when I wake up, I feel renewed and ready to serve Him. So next time you're having trouble falling asleep, maybe you don't, but if you do, I want you to try and try and think of all the different things that you can turn over to God and let God carry with you for a while because he's our shepherd and he'll be watching over us. Thanks for joining me. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, if you are somebody who's going to be attending our evening service on the evening of October 11th at 5 o'clock, I'm going to be preaching the same sermon. So if you want to come there and be surprised, feel free to skip ahead to the next song. But if you're not joining us, I'm actually going to be talking today about Psalm 23. Now, if you feel like you've heard it a lot, it's probably because you have. So I mentioned earlier this week to Vicar Matt, I said, you know, I'm going to be preaching on the psalm this week, Psalm 23. And he said, man, I, f I feel like I've heard it a lot this year. And when I heard him say that, I went and did a little bit of research. And in fact, you have heard it a lot this year. You see, our um, Bible lessons that we read on Sundays and share with you on Sundays come from a three-year lectionary cycle, year A, year B, and year C, that we get through a lot of the Bible. And when it's year A, like it is right now, we actually use Psalm 23 three different times. Three different times during Lent, during Easter, and now during this time of the year. And I was wondering, why does it keep coming up so much? I mean, it's, it's fine, don't get me wrong. I know that it's a really beloved psalm, and it's, it's good, it's got a lot of good stuff, but there are 149 other psalms to choose from. Plus, there's lots of other good stuff in the Bible. Well, when I told Vicar Matt that this one actually comes up three different times in the lectionary, he said, well, that's a good one. And it got me thinking, yeah, Vicar Matt, it is a good one. It's a good psalm. And it speaks to us when we need it most. This psalm, Psalm 23, is one that is both familiar and comforting when our lives feel anything but familiar. Even today, this evening, as we begin to transition back into in-person worship or some semblancy of normal, and when we're worshiping online, I mean, it's wonderful to go through the routines of worship, of welcoming, confessing, hearing the word of God and being sent out for mission. But I know that it is still unfamiliar. It's as if we are still in uncharted territory. And I know that I deeply desire direction and guidance. The guidance of the shepherd who will lead me. 
So when I read verse 2, ver that verse that stands out so much, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. What I really like about this verse is the commanding nature of the shepherd. It doesn't say that, well, he suggests some calm past, some green pastures, or he insinuates that you go by some still waters. No, it says that he makes me and he leads me. Because if God were not pushing me, I might respond kind of like a cranky toddler. I don't need a nap. I don't need any rest. Because sometimes I'm just stubborn. Because we are people who need rest. And I don't know about you, but I'm not likely to take it without some prompting. I know that God has created us to be people of action and people of rest. God worked for six days and then on the seventh he rested and commanded it as a day of rest for us. But somewhere in my mind, I have equated rest with being lazy instead of being necessary. And I have a feeling I'm not the only one out there who does that. Because how proud are we of boasting about our busyness, right? I don't have time to take a Sabbath. I can't possibly take a whole day off. We wouldn't be so prideful about breaking other commandments, would we? I couldn't possibly pay for that. I had to steal it. But we are people of action and people of rest. And I don't just mean getting a good night's sleep, but deep, restoring, and reoccurring rest in our Lord's arms. I know that during this time of quarantine has not been easy, and it's often been lonely for a lot of us, but I also know that some good has come out of it, some deep and intentional rest. I hear stories about people who are finally able to slow down, people who are finally able to take time to eat meals together, or read that stack of books that you've always said you'll get to one day, or people attending church every Sunday online, though they never would have taken the time or found the time if we were here in person, they're now setting that time aside to listen to the word of God read and sung and enacted. Now, I know if you are anything like me, you may be looking back at the shepherd during this time of rest saying, um, okay, Lord, I, uh, I think we've had enough time of this still water business. Let's get going. But then comes the genius and simplicity of this psalm in the very next verse, in verse 3, just when we're getting anxious to move on, we hear why we have been led to this place of stillness. In verse 3, it says, He restores my soul. When I think of the word restore, I often think of a piece of art or furniture, being brought back to the old way that it used to look. But being restored by our shepherd doesn't mean going back. It means being restored to go forward. It means going forward and be given a new life, a new restored life. Because in the waters of baptism, we are given a new restored life. In our confession and forgiveness, we are given a new, restored life. And God's wisdom, in God's wisdom, the shepherd knows that what we need is to rest by the still waters and on those green pastures and then be given a new, restored life. And we have been restored because life ahead will be difficult. In verse 4, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. 
your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That comfort comes not from knowing that we won't face evil or dark valleys, because we will, but the comfort comes from knowing that we are not alone, and we will never be alone. In an uncertain world, our foundation is made sure, is made more sure, not by knowing more, but by trusting more in the unwavering love and protection of our shepherd. This week on our uh, Wednesday morning virtual Bible study, one of our members was talking about the comfort that comes from the serenity prayer, a prayer that is often used in several 12-step programs, such as AA. The prayer that goes, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's almost as if we can place Psalm 23 into that prayer. Shepherd, grant me the comfort with uncertainty to accept the things I cannot change. The rest to prepare for changing the things that I can. And the trust in you to know that you will show me the difference. So, yeah, I think Vicar Matt was right. This psalm's a good one. And I pray that this good psalm would bless you and that our shepherd would bless you as he makes you lie down in green pastures and beside still waters. Amen. Thank you for your continued financial support of Emmanuel Lutheran Church 
and our ministry partners. It's through your generosity, through your giving, that we're able to continue ministry even during this time of pandemic. Please pray with me. Dear God, we are thankful for our time, our talent, and our treasures. Thank you for all who share abundantly, whether here at Emmanuel or in other ways throughout their life, whether that be time, talent, or treasures. Lord, it's what we receive from you, and we give back that portion to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we continue our prayers of the nation, and this week we pray for China. Lord, we have tension between our country and theirs, but we are called to still love and pray for them. And Lord God, we pray for love, peace, and compassion, that, and that they would have that care for their people, that they would govern justly and look out for their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, where can we turn to to find rest? There's bad news seemingly everywhere we look, whether it's on TV, in our neighborhood, on our social media feeds. Lord, it can seem overwhelming and exhausting, but we know that we can find our rest in you. Lord, we pray that you give us just a little bit of rest to continue so that we can continue to do the work that you call us to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray that our outdoor services continue to go smoothly, our in-person worship, and we just ask that you uh, look over us, provide us your guidance, and keep us safe as we're coming together as a community to worship you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we know that you hear what's said and what's in our hearts, and we offer our prayers silently and out loud. Lord, we give all these to you, trusting in your name. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we continue to do our baptismal remembrance, I invite you now to place, to make the sign of the cross on your forehead or on the forehead of someone in your family. And we begin by saying your name. So name, Matt, beloved child of God. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Please receive the blessing. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. <laughs>